Let's talk about the man of the hour, Faeldon. Richard, Faeldon was fired by the president, but is he off the hook? Well, the president has not made it clear, first of all, if he'll be reappointed again. Because we have a pattern kung saan. I think in the case of Faeldon, this was his third appointment. no? Actually, pa -ulit. Pa -ulit. At, uh, it's not also his first time to be embroiled in a Senate investigation. No? So, nung head siya ng uh, Bureau of Customs and then nilagay siya sa Office of Civil Defense even if involved siya in two coup attempts dun sa Oakwood Mutiny and also Manila uh, Penn Siege in 2007 and then yun nga, nilagay siya sa Bucor recently. So now he's an ex-director but the President did not rule out the possibility that he'll be appointed again. In fact, he joked na baka malay no, baka ma-appoint na naman yun, baka consultant or special advisor. We don't know. But the issue here is also punishment, no? Meron tayong pattern kung saan marami mga senior officials were embroiled in corruption, they're fired or they're recycled, and in some cases, in some of them, in fact, get even promoted. For instance, yung police chief ng Caloacan, no, after the Kian de los Santos case, I think he was relocated to a highway patrol, I think, position, and in fact, it was a form of promotion, no? So, Faldon is actually an avatar for a pattern of controversial recycling, and I would say impunity, Dito sa Duterte administration na yan. So there is first no clarity whether ma-punish si file doon. And second, also there is no assurance na hindi siya ma-reappoint ulit down the road. And of course, many people are asking, bakit parating na-reappoint si file doon? In fact, huwag natin kalimutan, just the other day, no, si file doon, he was very adamant na hindi siya mag-resign and he felt confident. In fact, I think sabi ng palasyo nung una na he still enjoys the confidence of the president. But eventually, during the press conference in Malacanang, in a moment of spontaneity, nakita natin frustration ni Paolo Duterte and he said, yes, I fired him. And I think the president is also responding dun sa snowball ng public backlash. And this is where we also see, no, yung influence ng media. I think kung hindi na-expose ng media tong issue na to, siguro the president would not have fired him, no? So it took so much public backlash, so much criticism, including from the allies of the president, for this to happen. So it seems the threshold of the tolerance of President Duterte for erring and incompetent official is far too high. Mm -hmm. Richard, let's talk about itong paulit-ulit nating problema. Sa Senate hearing kasi, naungkat na naman na yung mayayaman, may influensyang mm -hmm. mga bilanggo, they enjoy special privileges inside the Bilibid. Do you think this problem will ever get solved? Yun nga eh, si Pangulong Duterte nanalo siya based on, on dun sa anti-crime at anti-drug initiative na yan. At alam natin, yung drug problem at crime problem sa Pilipinas related ito dun sa nangyari sa loob ng prison system because a lot of these syndicates boss, these criminal big bosses are still operating kahit nandun sila sa loob ng preso. No? Between 2014 and 2019, no, 22,000 people have been released base dito sa GCTA na yan. Halos dalawang libo dyan ay people convicted of heinous crimes, right? And a lot of this actually happened under this administration. So medyo parang inconsistent na yung mensahe ng administration mo ay anti-drugs, anti-crime, habang pag tinignan mo yung kalagayan ng mga big fish, no? yung mga totoong big fish na nahuli or yung mga nasa labas, mukhang they're not facing the punishment that they should. So I think ito yung pinakamalaking, uh, one could say, inconsistency uh, at problema ng Duterte administration.